जय हिंद एंड अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल अ चेंज इन एरा हैज विटनेस्ड नॉट ओनली अ चेंज इन टेक्नोलॉजी बट अ ड्रास्टिक चेंज इन डायट्री लाइफ स्टाइल द ग्रोथ फ्रॉम प्रिमेटिव एरा टू प्लास्टिक एज हैज बीन एक्सपोनेंशियल एंड डेंटल केरीज हैज नॉट बीन एन एक्सेप्शन there are various oral health problems affecting the heart and soft tissues of oral cavity amongst all of these dental caries is the most prevalent one the treatment protocol of dental caries ranges widely from non intervention minimal invasive to invasive procedures the choice of treatment protocol lies in the correct diagnosis to prevent any unnecessary intervention the diagnosis should be done with a view of detecting carious lesions at the earliest possible which increases the opportunity for success with non operative interventions another important aspect which needs consideration during diagnosis is to prevent or incorrect or wrong diagnosis which is often seen in clinical situation like deep stain fissures mimicking caries cervical burnout mimicking interproximal lesions presence or absence of secondary caries which always poses a diagnostic dilemma for the dentist it is easier to diagnose this however the real challenge lies in diagnosing such carious lesions hence there is a need for all of us to be aware of the recent trends in diagnosis of dental caries to throw some light on this aspect i anupriya bhadoria a post graduate student from the department of conservative dentistry and endodontics subharti dental college and hospital merit is here before you to present my seminar on the topic recent trends in diagnosis of dental caries i'll be covering my seminar under the following headings before going to diagnosis let us brush up our knowledge about dental caries the word caries is derived from the latin word meaning rot or to decay as stated by shaffer dental caries is a microbiological disease of the calcified tissues of teeth characterized by demineralization of the inorganic portion and destruction of the organic substance of the tooth which often leads to cavitation according to studewind it is an infectious microbiological disease of the teeth that results in localized dissolution and destruction of the calcified tissues etiology of dental caries is multifactorial in which the triad of host microorganisms and substrate play a major role the fourth factor that is time was added to this triad by newbrun 2001 national institute of health consensus development conference on diagnosis and management of dental caries throughout life identified the need to use new strategies to provide improved detection risk assessment and diagnosis and to create and enhance use of improved methods to arrest or reverse the non cavitated lesion while improving surgical management of the cavitated lesion international consensus workshop on caries clinical trials was held in 2002 in italy it is important definitions of caries detection assessment and diagnosis were provided two terms detection and diagnosis are interrelated detection is the action or process of identifying the presence of something concealed whereas diagnosis is an art and science that results from the synthesis of scientific knowledge and clinical experience the consensus concluded not only detection and diagnosis but most importantly assimilation of all available data to decide if it is active or arrested which helps in risk assessment management and decision making the requirements of caries diagnostic tests includes that they need to have a high sensitivity and high specificity they should be reliable and valid they should be simple to perform with quicker results they should measure caries process and preferably be treatment oriented and easily communicable there are two terms associated with the diagnostic accuracy of caries detection test 
which is the sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is the maximum true positives results. It measures proportion of actual positives which are correctly identified as such. Whereas specificity is maximum true negative results. It measures the proportions of negatives which are correctly identified. Low sensitivity leads to underdiagnosis of caries, whereas low specificity leads to overdiagnosis of caries. There are certain prerequisites for caries detection and diagnosis, which include good lightning and magnification, quadrant isolation. Also, thorough drying should be carried out by gentle blast of air, which is useful in detection of white spot lesions. Coming to the methods of caries diagnosis. Most of the conventional methods were qualitative in nature, which included visual and tactile examination, radiographic methods, tooth separations, and caries detector dyes. Whereas most of the recent methods are quantitative, example, digital radiographic methods, use of visible light, use of laser light, and use of electrical current and ultrasounds, which now I shall be discussing one by one. Pitts introduced the iceberg concept in WHO in 1997, which scored the shape and depth of carious lesions as D1, D2, D3, and D4. And this precision of carious diagnosis was illustrated as an iceberg. Subclinical initial lesions in a dynamic state of progression or regression form the base of the iceberg. It is followed by the lesions detectable only with additional diagnostic aids. Above it lies D1, which is clinically detectable enamel lesions with intact surfaces. D2 are clinically detectable cavities limited to enamel. D3 are clinically detectable lesions in dentine. And D4 are the lesions extending into the pulp. Lesions ranging from D1 to D4 are easily detectable by conventional methods. But the real challenge, that is the base of the iceberg, that is the subclinical initial lesions, which require additional new diagnostic tools. Amongst the conventional diagnostic method, first is the visual and tactile examination. For accurate visualization and magnification, the teeth are cleaned and dried and observed under adjugate light. They are based on the criteria such as discoloration, opacification, surface roughness and cavitation. However, there are certain disadvantages. Like, the decay can be too small to generate a distinctive visual sign and the normal discolored pits and fissures can be mistaken for caries. Tactile examination can be carried out with the help of explorers. However, it should be done very carefully because vigorous probing may risk irreversible damage to incipient lesions and infected microorganisms may be seeded to uninfected areas. Visual tactile examination follow the International Caries Detection and Assessment System that is ICDAS criteria which is an evidence-based two digital identification system for caries detection where X is the state of the surface and Y is the severity of the carious lesion. The principle of the system is that the replacement of the traditional explorer with a ball ended probe would avoid traumatic and iatrogenic defect on incipient lesion and its mission is to devise a set of international visual criteria for caries detection that would also allow assessment of caries activity. Pitts in 2004 gave ICTS guidelines for scoring caries. Score 0 indicates first visual change in enamel. Score 2 a distant visual change in enamel. Score 3. Localized enamel breakdown in opaque or discolored enamel. Score 4. Underlying dentine shadow. Score 5. Is distinct cavity with visible dentine. And score 6. Is extensive cavity with visible dentine. Another diagnostic criteria was discovered by Nevaz in 1999. It was based on lesion activity and assessment and focuses on the surface characteristics of the lesion. The categories assigned to the lesion were non-cavitated active, non-cavitated inactive, cavitated active, cavitated inactive, filled, filled inactive caries, and filled active caries. An article by Braga et al. on detection activity assessment 
and diagnosis of various lesions and they concluded that the use of indices such as ICDS and NEVAC system during visual inspection aided by ball ended probe improves the performance of this method and must be performed in all patients. To aid visual examination, magnification loops can be used as they are comfortable to wear, secondly are portable and easily available in various magnifications. The most commonly used telescopic loops have a magnification of 2.5 to 3x. Dyes are the chemical agents that can be used for detection of dental caries. They are non-specific protein based, usually stain the organic matrix of less mineralized tooth structure, but not the bacteria. Enamel caries can be detected by procyon castane Zyglo ZL22, which is made visible by UV illumination and Brilliant Blue, which enhances diagnostic quality of foci. Dyes used for dentinal clearies include basic fustian, that is 0.5% in propylene glycol and acid red and methylene blue. Their limited use is due to low specificity and low sensitivity. Visual examination can also be enhanced by the use of certain techniques, the first among which is the ultraviolet illumination. Ultraviolet illumination increases optical contrast. It is based on the principle that the natural fluorescence of the tooth enamel is decreased in the areas of less mineral content. In this figure, carious lesion can be observed as a dark spot against a fluorescent background. Coming to the second enhanced visual technique which involved due to the growing concerns about ionizing radiation that is fiber optic trans illumination foci, based on the phenomena of light scattering. The basis behind this technique is that the decayed matter scatters light more strongly and has a lower index of light transmission, so it appears darker. The figure on the left is the clinical view of a canine having distal caries and the figure on the right side shows that the foci shows subtle penetration of the caries. A probe is placed on the cervical region for anterior caries detection. As we can see in this picture, initial mesial proximal carious lesion in the lateral incisor can be distinctly observed using foci. Whereas for posterior carious detection, it can be placed both on buccal and lingual aspects. In this clinical image, initial distopalatal carious lesion can be distinctly observed using foci in a premolar. Advantages of foci are that there are no radiation hazards. It is simple and comfortable to use and the lesions which are not diagnosed by radiograph can be diagnosed. But the disadvantages are that the permanent records are difficult to maintain, it is subjected to intra and inter-observer variation and it is difficult to locate probe in certain areas. An article by Iran et al on comparison of visual examination by wing radiography and fiber optic trans illumination on caries detection and they concluded that the efficacy in detection of proximal lesions was higher for bite wing than foci. Digital imaging fiber optic trans illumination was developed by Niederman et al. to reduce the shortcomings of foci by combining foci with digital CCD camera that is charge coupled device camera. The mechanism involves white light propagation from an optical fiber passes through the tooth to an unilluminated surface which is received by the mirror on the other side, which further sends the signal to the CCD camera and then send it to computer for analysis and storage. Diaphotai can be used to diagnose early tooth decay, fractures, leakage around old amalgam restorations and remaining caries after excavation. It is advantageous as it doesn't use film and ionizing radiations. Instant images can be obtained and it detects early caries and is more sensitive. The disadvantages include that it is cannot determine the depth of the lesion and has a low specificity. It all conducted a study on the correlation of diaphotai to clinical and radiographic images in class 2 carious lesions and concluded that diaphotai could be considered as a useful adjunct in detecting interproximal carious lesions. 
Ramp illumination with near infrared light uses a wavelength of 1310 nanometers. It is non destructive, uses non ionizing radiation as an alternative, and is more sensitive. John Sitchell simulated decay in a tooth. As seen in figure A, the lesion was not visible using trans illumination. Whereas in figure B, an X ray of the section was taken and the lesion was faintly visible. In figure C, with the use of near infrared trans illumination, the lesion becomes distinctly visible. With infrared trans illumination, the tooth enamel appears to be transparent. The demineralized area tissues undergo attenuation 20 to 50 times and appear darker. Fluorosis appears white and calculus is extremely white. Let us have a look at the advantages. It images at a greater depth. It is more sensitive than X-rays. It can differentiate between stains, pigmentation, demineralization and fluorosis. It has a better image contrast. In a study on the benefits of Dignocam procedure for detection and diagnosis of caries, it was found that near infrared trans illumination had 99% accuracy rate versus visual inspection which had only 2% when compared for detection of proximal caries. Case report by Kim et al. discusses the clinical application of Dignocam and they concluded that it can be used to confirm proximal caries, margins of restoration and extent of dental caries. Next advancement is the endoscopic filtered fluorescence method based on the fluorescence of blue light 400 to 500 nanometer. The white spot lesions appear darker than enamel when viewed through broadband gelatin filter. The image of the enamel surface can be viewed on the screen using a videoscope. Its advantages are that it diagnoses incipient caries earlier and is mo it more accurate than radiograph. The disadvantages include it is time consuming and expensive. Multiphoton imaging technique uses light of 850 nanometers. Two infrared photons are absorbed simultaneously unlike a single blue photon used in QLF. The penetration depth into caries lesion is up to 500 microns. This is a composite image of a caries lesion made by multi-photon technique superimposed on the image of the tooth. The advantages of multi-photon are lower risk of phototoxicity to the pulp as low laser power is used. It quantifies mineral loss. The disadvantages include the micron assay movement required to produce serial tomographic images over a period of one minute or so is very difficult. Currently, the technique has been performed only on extracted teeth. Radiographic methods have a great value in detection and determination of those carious lesions which are not readily determined by clinical examination. They can be divided into conventional methods and recent methods, which will be discussed in the further part of my presentation. Radiographic assessment Although it tends to underestimate the histological extent of the caries lesion, yet it provides useful information in diagnosing caries. The limitations of conventional radiography are, it presents a two-dimensional picture of a 3D object, earlier stages cannot be disclosed, and the non-cavitated lesions on root and on the buccal or lingual side becomes very difficult to detect. To overcome these limitations, advances in radiographic techniques had come into existence. Zero radiography introduced by Carlson is a completely dry, non-chemical process which makes use of electrostatic process as in Xerox machines. In contrast to conventional X-rays, photographic developers are not needed, hence the term zero radiography. Unique feature of zero radiography is edge enhancement by which areas of subtle tissue density difference are made more visible which can be seen in these images in which thin edge features are superimposed to show close alignment. Zero radiography is twice as sensitive as the conventional G-speed films and is comparable to the E-speed films 
used in conventional radiography for diagnosing caries. Its advantages are both the positive and negative images are obtained together. There is less radiation exposure. No wet processing is required. Its disadvantages are electric charge over the film may cause discomfort to the patient. Positioning difficulties may be encountered and it, it has more image artifacts. Digital subtraction is a method in which two images of the same area are taken at different periods of time and superimposed on each other to evaluate progression of the lesion. In a study by Ricketts et al., the tooth was demineralized and observed after 12 months by subtraction radiography. The dark areas in the picture depicts progression of the lesion. The advantages include that it is useful in studying the progression or regression of carious lesion. And its biggest disadvantage is that radiographs should be reproducible. Minor changes in exposure, geometry, contrast and density may lead to large errors. Digital radiography has made a huge impact in imaging in dentistry. With the advent of computers in dentistry, researchers have utilized them for diagnostic purposes as in digital imaging technique. A digital radiographic system has the following components. An X-ray set with special timer, an intraoral sensor, a display processing unit, a printer. These are the various commercially available systems. In the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics at Subharthi Dental College, we have Kodak and Votec. There are various tools available in RVG system for detection of carious lesion. For example, contrast, brightness, density, zooming, linear measurements, magnification, inversion and embossing. The images can be viewed in these different tools. As seen here, the image can be viewed in a different contrast and different color which aids in diagnosis. A study by Kulnish et al. on comparison of visual inspection and different radiographic method for dentine caries detection on occlusal surfaces and they concluded that E and F speed films were linked to higher sensitivity values whereas higher specificity was recorded for the digital system and it is recommended as it prevents over treatment thanks to its high specificity. CBCT might not be considered as a primary method of choice, but the scans taken for other reasons, example implant placement, can very well be utilized for detection of carious lesions. In this CBCT, we can appreciate the extent of secondary carious in axial, coronal and sagittal planes. A study by Vedh Pathak et al. on CBCT, an effective tool in detecting caries under fixed dental processes and they concluded that CBCT is used for detecting caries under fixed dental processes without their removal. Another recent diagnostic method is terahertz imaging which causes uses waves having frequency 10 to the power 12 hertz in which the object is placed in the path of terahertz beam and the image can be recorded using a CCD imaging. This is a terahertz image of an extracted tooth and the dark blue region in the coronal portion of the tooth corresponds with the position of the caries observed in tooth slices. This is still under experimentation since terahertz waves are strongly absorbed by water and can produce alterations in image interpretation. A study by Longbottom et al on the potential uses of terahertz pulse imaging in dentistry, caries and erosion detection showed that terahertz imaging is capable of identifying white spot caries lesions at a pre-cavitation stage. Another recent diagnostic method which was given by Webner is tuned aperture computed tomography. Slices can be brought together in a 3D computer model called a pseudo hologram for detection of small primary and recurrent carious lesions. The advantages are radiation dose is not greater than 2 IUPA, the resolution is much similar to the 2D radiograph and the artifact associated with CT such as starburst patterns seen with metallic restorations do not exist with TACT. 
Nair et al. in his article on tuned aperture computed tomography and detection of recurrent caries concluded that TAC is very effective in detection of recurrent caries. Another 3D imaging tool without use of ionizing radiation which can determine the extent of carious lesion and assess the status of pulpal tissue is magnetic resonance. And its use is limited due to its high cost and as it sometimes becomes claustrophobic for the patient. A study was done by Idyatulin et al. which compared MRI with CBCT. On the left side, there are MRI images at different cross sections with where the encircled areas show carious lesions which is distinctly visible using MRI. Whereas on the right hand side we can see CBCT. Although there is presence of caries but they are not very clear. It is important also to take note that the depth of the lesions in MRI corresponded with the histological sections. This is a photograph of maxillary central incisor. This is a 2D radiograph of the same tooth which shows bilateral interproximal composite and recurrent caries. This is a CBT CT image which shows cervical secondary caries which is shown by green arrows which were not visible in 2D radiograph. Whereas an MRI image gives a very clear idea of the depth and extent of secondary caries which can be clearly appreciated by the white areas at the cervical extent of the restoration. Electrical conductance measurement which was proposed by Maggie Todd in 1878 is based on the principle that carious tooth has more pores filled with water increasing its conductivity and decreasing the impedance. A sound tooth will have highest electrical resistance which decreases in enamel caries and is lowest in dentinal caries by a factor of 30. Instruments based on this principle were developed which were Vanguard electronic caries detector and caries meter which is small and handy in which the four colored lights reflect the status of the tooth. Green indicates no need of treatment, yellow indicates enamel caries, orange indicates dentinal caries whereas red shows impedance value below 15 kilo ohms indicating pulpal exposure. Moving on to the fluorescent technique. Fluorescence is a phenomena by which an object is excited by a particular wavelength of light and the reflected light is of a larger wavelength. Quantitative light induced fluorescence, QLF and laser fluorescence. Dignodent are the two methods which work on the principle of measurement of fluorescence on tooth to discriminate between carious and sound enamel. Quantitative light induced fluorescence was introduced by Bechkin and Thunderstorm in 1981. It is based on autofluorescence of teeth. In this image, we can see that the tooth appears as fluorescent green, whereas the demineralized areas appear as dark spots. QLF works with fluorescence under red light. It comprises of a diode laser and a fiber optic cable. It helps in detection of white spot lesions, caries adjacent to fixed orthodontic appliances, residual caries, caries under sealants, and root caries. It is also helpful in detection of subgingival calculus. Here is a video showing the working of Diagnodent. Diagnodent is an advanced dental technology that can help us find tooth decay more effectively. Visual examination and dental explorers help us find decay on the surfaces of teeth and x-rays show us advanced decay and decay between teeth. However, these methods don't find decay that's located inside the tooth. So we add Diagnodent to help us discover this hidden decay. The light probe scans your teeth with harmless pulses of laser light. When the laser reaches decay under the surface of the tooth, the decay emits a fluorescent light. This fluorescent light bounces back to the sensor and is translated into a digital readout and an audible signal. 
In general, the higher the number, the greater the amount of decay in the tooth. With Diagnodent, we can more accurately and reliably find decay in its earliest stages before it causes more widespread damage. This enables us to provide treatment before your tooth is at risk of more extensive and expensive treatment. Treatment suggestion with Diagnodent. The value 0 to 14 indicate no treatment other than prevention. The values 15 to 20 indicate the need for pit and fissure sealants, whereas the values 21 to 99 indicates operative treatment. Diagnodent pen does not measure internal changes within the enamel structure, like the QLF, but it measures the degree of bacterial activity. It can also be used to monitor caries regression and progression. In a study by Goel et al, when Diagnodent was evaluated for caries in primary molars, it was found that for enamel caries, Diagnodent had a high sensitivity and a high accuracy. And for dentinal caries, it had high sensitivity but low accuracy. Fluorescence aided caries excavation works on the principle that several oral microorganisms are known to produce fluorescing molecules or fluorophores that emit in the yellow to red area of visible spectrum under certain excitation wavelengths. This technique uses a handpiece that combines a fluorescence diagnodent procedure with caries removal. The visible orange-red fluorescence in caries dentines is used to detect residual caries. A study by Lennon et al. on fluorescence aided caries excavation compared to conventional method which concluded that phase is more effective than conventional caries excavation. The Midwest Caries ID is a handheld battery operated device that uses a light emitting diode. It evaluates changes in the mineral density of the teeth. Its two most important properties include full mouth scan in less than two minutes. It is not hampered by fluoride making it particularly useful in children. Carious areas turn the LED from green to red which is converted by fiber optic into an audible signal. Spectra caries detection and fluorescence camera analyzes the reflectance and refraction of the LED captured by the built-in fiber object and converts it into an electrical signal which is analyzed. The fluorescence in green indicates sound dental tissue and in red indicates a carious dental tissue. Its disadvantages is light penetration limited to enamel up to 3 mm in the proximal area. Here is a video showing the working of spectra which helps in patient education. To the future. With the spectra, I can show the patient what I am seeing. I really value patients seeing their own tooth, their own circumstance, because it makes it easier for them, to, I believe, to feel comfortable with the treatment that I'm out and compare that six months from now. It puts the number map on there, and then I can point to the different areas where I see numbers that are significant and talk to them about whether or not we recommend treatment at this time or we should check it again in six. Excited and interested and happy to use it. Moving forward to the Canary system, which is a laser-based instrument with an integrated intraoral camera displaying images for immediate chair side patient education. A patient report is generated on an odontogram. 0 to 20 indicates healthy tooth, 21 to 70 indicates early decay, and 71 to 100 signifies advanced decay. As compared to Diagnodent, it helps in detection of white spots, caries under sealants, around restorations, and orthodontic brackets. The ability to do depth Profilometry, that is, we can go deeper, not only looking at the surface but even below the surface. The motto is if we find it early, we can treat it early. Moving on to the next imaging technique, 
that is optical coherence tomography OCT it uses low coherence light with considerable penetration into tissue and scattering is measured which tells depth of carious lesion figure a is an image of an extracted human molar figure b is histological section for the same figure c is a digital radiograph where no defects or lesions were visible but in figure d the bright signals in the oct image demonstrate the carious lesions which can be seen by the white arrows ultrasonic carious detector works on pulse echo technique and uses longitudinal waves with a frequency of greater than 20000 hertz and the principle is based upon the amount of sound reflected depends on the structure of the reflecting surface normal enamel produces no echoes whereas cavitation produces echoes of higher amplitude development of computer has made it possible to use automated procedure to standardize image assessment one such system is the logicon system which is an artificial intelligence trophy 97 system which helps in detection of proximal caries using a unique database and helps in graphic visualization of the size and progression of the lesion the logicon software inspects a potential lesion on a proximal surface the region of interest is marked by a v tool the change in tooth density is seen and accordingly the standard treatment plan is decided a study by najamuddin et al on logicon a third eye for caries detection and they concluded that logicon caries detector can enable dentists to find 49% more cases of caries penetrating in the dentine than they would be able to find without it to summarize the latest diagnostic aids According to Susan Vogel, most of these systems are applicable for both smooth and occlusal caries. In the presence of an existing restoration, the system that can be used are Canary, CaryView, Sporolife, and Spectra. When image transport is required, the aforementioned systems comes handy. Coming to the conclusion. with the evolution in our understanding of the caries process together with stress on improved method for early and predictable diagnosis of caries the conventional methods have become outdated the recent methods of caries detection are a result of continuous evolution of technology arising from the need for implementing preventive and interceptive treatment strategies to recognize and control caries process These recent methods coupled with changing philosophies in field of caries diagnosis and detection are more accurate and are more directed towards the treatment needs. These are a list of my references. I would like to acknowledge our principal Dr. Nikhil Shivastav sir for giving me this opportunity to present my seminar. I would also like to extend my deepest gratitude towards my HOD Dr. Vinita Nikhil ma'am towards my guide Dr. Shikha Jaiswal ma'am and towards my co-guide Dr. Sachin Gupta sir and all the other faculty members of my department for their valuable inputs Last but not the least I would like to thank my seniors my batchmates and my juniors for the constant support Thank you